all right Thursday and uh, Alin is here the small hands man <laughs> he's uh, helping me put the uh, amp gauge in so he's able to fit his hand up there and behind with no issues whereas these fat hands have no choice to uh, call the small hands man so anyway he's almost got it out he's been here for three minutes and he's got it wiggling so that's a good thing here I thought he wasn't going to be able to get it at all all right, Saturday morning, the 27th of August, and a uh, beautiful day today to be out in the garage working on the TR250. I think we left off, uh, we were replacing the amp gauge. I had a Lynn here to help me do that. So the amp gauge is installed. Need a little bit of a cleanup there. We got some uh, bracketry and some spade connectors, etc. Still kicking about, so we'll clean that up today. The other thing I want to do is I want to uh, complete the ensemble out here of the blue hoses by exchanging out the vacuum hose to the brake booster with some blue hose so that'll complete that look in the engine bay like it or not one of the other things I want to do is I want to rejig the inline fuel shutoff valve that I installed on the 250 dips to make it a little bit more accessible I like the location here on the TR6 which is kinda out in the open and easily reachable and I wasn't really happy with the way I installed it here on the uh, 250 initially and that was primarily due to the length of the, uh, the flexible line or the rubber hose coming off the hard line. I need to extend that. So what I've done, because you can't pinch off a uh, metal fuel line to be able to exchange a rubber line out without draining the fuel tank, and I don't want to do that. I've just got a little adapter here. So I'm going to add another piece of hose to be able to extend the rubber hose and get into a location that makes it a little bit easier for me to shut the valve off. While we're doing that, we may as well uh, exchange out the fuel filter in there. I do like the clear filters. Uh, we're going to be using the Spectre Performance one. Um, I do have something similar on the TR6 already that I've been using for almost 15 years now, which I quite like. I like to be able to see through the filter. You can see, I don't think you see it down there. But you can see the clear filter. I like to be able to see into the filter. So that served me well. So we're going to do the same filter arrangement on the TR250 versus the steel or metal filter canister that's on there now which you can't see through obviously so we're going to do that as part of a job today I've also been playing around with the distributor <clears throat> I was um, doing some thinking about packing spares <clears throat> excuse me for my upcoming trip and uh, I was getting together my spares over here in my I call it my little electrical kit so Usually I carry a spare Patronics in here, uh, some spare rotors, some spare caps, spare points, etc. for my distributors. And I took off a cap <clears throat> and I was going to exchange out the old cap on the distributor that was in the car to find that the, old, or the new cap didn't fit on the old distributor. So <laughs> I investigated that a bit further and thank goodness I did. So I found I've got the completely wrong distributor in this car. This is actually a Bosch distributor. Should be a Lucas distributor in this car. I believe these were used um, on the GT6s uh, at a later date. But uh, anyway, the problem is that all of the Lucas components, which I normally have on hand, caps, rotors, condensers, points, etc., do not work in the Bosch distributor. So that would have been uh, a bit of a problem had I had an issue on the road and tried to use my spares to fix anything that went wrong with the distributor that was in the car. So what I've done is I've gone through my parts bin and I found an old Lucas distributor that should be on this car. It's actually not the correct uh, year or correct. I believe the correct distributor has a vacuum advance and retard module for the TR250. Uh, this has the single module on it so we're going to go ahead and use it anyway this one obviously only had the single module on it as well so we're just in the process of getting that fitted so that should take a little bit of time to do update on the uh, radiator as i mentioned in my previous video i went ahead and ordered an aluminum radiator and a stainless steel rad shroud and those have arrived at my mailbox in the US so they're now winging their way to my Canadian box so I should have those by next week so we may go ahead and uh, remove the radiator in preparation for the new radiator to arrive now I mentioned that this car needs to go for safety and certification and that was another adventure 
all on its own that I had yesterday going from shop to shop. We'll talk about that in a minute. So one of the critical things that I need to have done on this car is to get it uh, aligned. So I need a four-wheel alignment. So that's a little bit easier said than done in a small town. So yesterday I went to a couple of different locations to see if they were able to do an alignment on a 68 Triumph TR250. So the first shop I went to, which is supposed to uh, specialize in classic cars, said to me that Triumph is a trigger word for them. So I guess they've had some bad experiences working on Triumphs in the past and they won't touch it. Went to another shop at, that basically said, well, we don't think our uh, alignment machine is going to work, so we're not interested in doing it. So now I've gone to another little performance shop in town that deals specifically more with things like um, uh, older Nissans, etc. And they are going to do it. The only problem is that they cannot get it into the shop because they're so busy, they can't get it into the shop until September the 6th. So we've got a little bit of time to tinker on this to get maybe the rad and the shield done before it actually goes into the shop for the alignment. I'm also going to get them to do, at the same time, I'm going to get them to do the certification. Um, I'm going to be there with the shop working alongside of them. They're not really familiar with British cars, so I thought I asked them, are you okay with me kicking around the shop and just being there to answer any questions you have? And they were open to that, so I'm happy about that. So September 6th is the date for that. Um, I'm hoping there might be a cancellation. I've told them that if there's a cancellation prior to that, I can probably get the car in earlier so that they should give me a call if that's the case. So maybe I'll get the car in sooner than later. All right, we've installed the uh, distributor and we've got the car up and running and timed with a vacuum gauge. And now we're kind of going a little bit backwards. So as you can probably see, I've got the car right now on TDC on the firing or the compression stroke. And you can see that the rotor is pointing at uh, just a little after 6 o'clock, let's say. So ultimately, the rotor should be pointing about 7 o'clock. So the distributor needs to rotate a slight bit. The problem I'm having is with my tack cable, the way the distributor is positioned right now, the tack cable needs to run over the top of the fuel pump to attach to the threads on the input for the tack cable and that's causing a problem. So the distributor needs basically to rotate out away from the engine in order for that tack cable to be attached properly. So we're going to attempt to move, lift and move and twist and turn the distributor drive gear to make this uh, fit a little bit better. I can show you what it's supposed to look like on my TR6 here for reference. Relative positioning. Let's just go over here and you can maybe see what I'm talking about. So there's the position of the distributor in the TR6 and you can see how the cable roots away from over the top of the fuel pump. So that's what I'm ultimately trying to do with the TR250 to get the tack cable run a little bit better and to get the uh, rotor, rotor pointing in the right direction. That may also mean I need to rewire the cap, the uh, distributor cap wiring and move the plug wires around one location based on where the rotor is pointing when I get it to 7 o'clock, if I can get it to 7 o'clock. So we're going to attempt to do that now. Wish me luck. Alright, car is back up and running uh, with the newly moved distributor gear. Sounds good. I've uh, tested it with the vacuum gauge. We're getting about 16 to 17 HG on the vacuum gauge. Here's what it looks like now with the uh, tack cable in the correct position and the distributor moved, so uh, that's looking good. Got about uh, just a thousand on the uh, RPM gauge. Could probably lower the idle a tiny bit. But I think these cams like to idle a little bit higher. So I'm happy with that. So uh, the plan is now to convert this to um, Petronix ignition. So what I'll do is I'll carry the old distributor with the points as a spare and we'll convert this to Petronix and uh, have the best of both worlds. If we have a failure with the electronics unit and the Petronix, then we can always switch back to the points distributor. All right, that's the plan. So moving forward. All right, can't remember where I left off and whether I showed this or not, but we replaced the hose to the uh, brake booster. So we have nice uh, blue hoses to complement the spark plug wires now. I just started to work on installing the new Protronics module in the distributor. 
So I've got the uh, distributor apart over here and we're taking apart, or not taking apart, but we're just having a look at the distributor in the TR6 because I already have the Protronics installed in there. So I'm just looking at that for reference. It's not too difficult an install. So uh, I've got all the parts over here. These are actually my backup parts. The uh, Protronics module that I bought to go in the TR250 is not actually the right one. It's actually for a Mallory distributor. Now I've got the Lucas distributor in there. So I'm using my backup Protronics to put in there. So again, we've got a full points distributor we're going to carry with us. Plus I've got extra sets of points that I carry. So it's not a big deal if the uh, Protronics happens to burn out. I've never had an issue personally, knock on wood. But um, it's always good to have backups. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and install the um, Protronics in the TR250. And uh, we'll just remove the points out of here in the condenser. And uh, we'll put in the Protronics unit. There's a quick look of what that looks like at the moment. Maybe we'll give that uh, center post there a bit of oil before we uh, button things up. But uh, that's what it looks like. It's always good to take a picture for reference of what your points look like just in case you have to reinstall them. Sometimes you forget how to do that if you're on the road. Uh, it's always good to have reference. So uh, I've taken a picture on my cell phone that I'll take with me just in case we ever need to revert back to the points. Alright, a quick update on the Protronics install. So a couple of things to note. One, uh, you got to make sure that the wires are tucked down and there's no slack in the wires because it's happened to me before actually where the wires get caught around the rotor and of course pull out of the magnet and then you're done. Uh, the other thing is there's this little plastic, I'm going to call it a feeler gauge, and that goes in between the magnet and your little uh, rotor buffer, I'm going to call it. Just below the rotor there's a little plastic wheel that uh, fits over the uh, little hex nubs for the uh, points to run on. So that's uh, kind of important. Uh, we've shortened the wiring to go to the coil, so we've just put some uh, connectors on the end of that. We're just about to hook this up, put the cap on and give this a shot to see if we've got it set up properly. So uh, just wanted to give you a quick update on that. My ground wire is looking a little suspect here. I don't have another one. I'm going to probably order another one and replace that, but for now it'll be okay. We'll just uh, swap it out at a later. It's pretty easy to swap that. So we'll just get another uh, ground wire for this and to make sure that that ground wire is in good shape. So, all right, let's get the cap on, let's get the wires hooked up and we'll give it a shot. Oh, by the way, swapped that rotor out for the red rotor, the non-riveted rotor. Uh, haven't had a lot of success with anything but the red rotors. So we prefer to keep those on the car if possible. All right, let's see how we did. I haven't tried to crank it yet, so who knows what's going to happen, but uh, everything's hooked back up. The plug wires are back up, coil's hooked up, and uh, I think we're ready to go. The car is still a little tiny bit warm from where I was uh, running it earlier, so I'm not sure that we need a choke. So we're going to try it without the choke. So uh, let's go over there and we'll see what's going on. <clears throat> All right, one final check on this side. Everything looks good. Okay, so all tools are put away. Recommend you put your tools away that you've been working on because a lot of times the tools will vibrate off somewhere and either hit the floor or take a chip out of your paint. Most likely it'll take a chip out of your paint. So I usually try to move my tools before I do a start. All right, here we go. Battery on. Yeah. Fingers crossed. They need choke. Of course, we're going to have to adjust the timing after we put the Petronics in, but uh, let's give her one more shot. And maybe I'll put the chokes on.
I'm going to do it manually because my chokes are still not hooked up. So let's give this a shot. and we're going to recheck our timing. Turn our chokes off. So definitely uh, let it warm up. We'll recheck our timing. We'll come back. All right, 7 p.m. and uh, we're doing a bit of a dirty job. So we're removing that uh, fuel line as we talked about before. I'm going to bring it over here in this open area versus being crammed all the way down there. So we've cut the bottom fuel line. We spliced in another piece of line and we're just about to undo the hard line here at the pump and pull out the old filter and inline shutoff valve. And we're going to probably turn the hard pipe that's actually on the uh, pump right now. We're going to turn it over to the left here. Probably going to trim it down a little bit. Uh, it's quite long, so we might just trim it a bit. And then we'll move things over and replumb everything, and hopefully everything will be okay. And then we'll move on to the next job. Crossing them off slowly but surely. All right, I think I mentioned it before, but just a little bit more details on the uh, fuel filter I'm going with. So this is the Spectre Performance. Like I said, I've seen this uh, marketed by a number of different companies, including Mr. Gasket. So it's a clear uh, glass filter, and then it's got some assorted fittings on the back, uh, rubber or plastic fittings, so you can choose your inlet and outlet. Uh, we need 5 16 so it has that included. So you can actually buy uh, backup filters for these, so these are able to be changed out, these filters. But the fact that they're clear is why I like them, so you can see if there's any debris in there that needs to be cleaned out. So there's the part number. Again, this was an Amazon purchase. So we're going to fit it to the car. We've got the line pretty much where we want it to be. That's a better look at where the fuel shutoff is. It's a lot more accessible there. So we'll uh, move the fuel line up and around, and we'll plumb this uh, fuel filter in the line. All right, we got that shutoff valve in a better location, easily accessible now, and our fuel filter is right there. So we're good to go there. All I'm going to do now is just probably put a zip tie on the lower fuel line to keep it against the frame rail a little bit better. Uh, but other than that, I'm happy with that. So uh, we'll move on to the next project. All right, Monday evening, the 29th of August, about 9 p.m. And I figured I'd come out and do a little bit of a power hour tonight. It's definitely been a hot day today, hot and humid. It's actually quite humid out tonight, but uh, it's a nice night to be out in the garage, so I figured I'd uh, put a little bit of uh, a power hour in. Uh, I've been tinkering on the car a little bit, doing little odd jobs here and there, nothing too strenuous. Um, I did do some uh, wiring cleanup on the back here, and I just did some zip tying. You're not going to be able to see this, but I did some zip tying on the uh, reverse lights, or sorry, the license plate lights on the bumperettes actually go up underneath the car and in through the trunk. So I did some cleanup on the wiring there. Uh, as you can tell, the hardtop's back out on the car. I'm actually doing, uh, trying to get this fitted properly. Um, when Alina and I did the shimming of the uh, car uh, recently, within a couple weeks ago, we kind of mentioned that we thought that the hardtop might not uh, actually line up again because we shimmed the rear up. So that's thrown the alignment of the Surrey hardtop section off. 
so that means I need to adjust the backlight so we'll do that in the next few days. I've also been playing around with the front seal on the uh, hardtop section as well. Is that looking like it's going to be too thick? So we're going to have to play around with that. What else have I done on the car? Oh, we switched the uh, hoses back to black. Uh, I don't think I was too crazy about the blue ones. And we were calling them whether Racer Boy Blue, I think we were calling them. But anyway, we're back to black on those hoses. Uh, what else have I done? A bunch of small things. Oh, I fixed the glove box door so it now actually opens and closes and we've got the hinge going on that. Um, we put a new voltage stabilizer in, at least a temporary one. I have a solid state one coming um, from Dave Connett who builds them from scratch. So we'll put that one in, but at least temporarily we have one in so the gauges are now working again. So uh, if the safety certification shop calls, at least we'll have working gauges. Uh, I do have my safety certification, I'm not sure if I've mentioned this already, but I do have my safety certification and alignment booked for September the 6th, but I, there is an, a chance that they might have some cancelled appointments and I might get a call on short notice if I want to get the car up to snuff and ready to go before we go there and things like the gauges need to work for safety and certification, so we're doing everything we can, so if we do get that call early we can actually go and get the car certified and safetyed and ready for the road. By the way, uh, I received a notification today that my new aluminum radiator and my stainless steel shroud are in as well as my choke cables so I'll be picking those up from the mailbox tomorrow so stay tuned for the installation of those items. In the meantime I thought uh, prior to installing the um, stainless steel shroud I needed to do a little bit of work at the front of the car and that's what we're working on tonight. We're going to be installing a grill badge on the grill so I figured it'd be a good time to do that before the shroud goes in so we can actually install it properly uh, without having too much issues. Um, so here's an original grill badge from Six Pack Car Club I belong to in the US and I think I previously mentioned we're trying to get this car ready to go to the trials which is in uh, Lexington, Kentucky in a few weeks time. So um, this is an original badge it's probably 30-35 years old maybe 30 years old let's say uh, and this is a badge that I had done a production run on. This was a just a, um, a proof badge, and it's actually not the, quite, the right color. But I actually ran this on my TR6 for a short period of time until the actual ones, the proper colored ones, came in. I've got one here on my in front of my TR6. So this is a run of badges that I had done and sold to the six pack members. Um, this badge is actually going to work well, I think, with my. 250 because it's kind of got that royal blue thing going on so I think we're going to stick this on the car and uh, I've got the mounts here for it. I'm going to maybe possibly add the um, Toronto Triumph Club, my local uh, Toronto Triumph Club badge which I have as well on my TR6 over here. You can see that badge there. The only problem is it's problematic to mount it on the 250 without drilling holes because the uh, mounting is quite di a bit different. This will be a fairly easy mount with these studs on the back. I've just shortened them a little bit. So uh, anyway, like I said, short job tonight. Hopefully we'll just mount that badge and we'll call it a night. And then we'll get back out here tomorrow and hopefully we'll have our parts to work with. And we can start exchanging the rad out and adding that stainless steel shroud. That should uh, change things up quite a bit in the engine bay. Alright, we've got the six pack badge installed on the grill. I think it looks good. Like I said, it uh, matches well with this royal blue paint. It's a bit of a purpley blue on the badge. so. Should be good to go there. I forgot to mention we did actually reinstall our trim rings that fell off on my first test drive around the block. So hopefully those will stay on for a little bit longer period of time this time. So if not, we're going to have to come up with another solution to uh, keep those things on. The other thing I did was I actually uh, put these little trim rings on. Oh, you can't see that. These little trim rings here were falling off. So what I've done is I just silicone these on. So if I need to remove them at some point to change the bulb, I'll be able to get them off. But sorry. Keep, keep holding you out of frame but anyway these guys are on there fairly solidly now at least they won't pop off so we're good to go there 